Next morning we left for the Polish-Czech border and our next stop-off point, Prague. The roads were clear, the sun was shining, but it seemed my ace driver didn't have a clue which way we were going. I'm just looking at where we're going. We're going uh, south uh, according to that sun. We're going actually we're going we're going we're going east. We're going west at the moment, aren't we? You've just said we're going south, we're going east, we're going west. No, There's only got one left. No. We're not going north. Navigating by the sun. So they, so they I always navigate by the sun and the stars. Are you an ancient mariner as well as an ancient rally driver? Oh yes. <laughs> Were you fascinated with, with cars and driving whenever you were a, a wee nipper then? Well, very much so. I was actually given a car when I was uh, nine years of age. It was a thing called a Harding. It was a little two-seater. It was more like a bath chair and it belonged to the clergyman next door. And then when he died, he left it to me as well. And here I had a car when I was nine. And yeah, that's a nice story. And, and the rear, the wheels, the brakes only worked on the rear wheels. So every time you braked hard, the, the you know, it was, like, it, was like, it was like using the handbrakes again. So it certainly taught me the, about the balance, I think, I suppose, mm. at an early age. And what about fitness back then? Because everybody's obsessed with that now. And say we weren't that fit. I mean, we enjoyed life. I mean, uh, but no, we weren't fit like them where they are today. And certainly, when we were practicing, I mean, we used to have a hell of a good time, you know. You mean you went rallying with hangovers? Well, I wouldn't say we went rallying, we went practicing with hangovers. No, <laughs> we didn't, no, 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 we didn't, we didn't go rallying. Oh, no, no, didn't, that, that would have been uh, too, too, that would have made it too much like hard work. Yeah. And the first real success we had with the Mini was the Tour de France Automobile, uh, which was a, a not like the bicycle race, but we went all around France to the different racing circuits. And, uh, and of course, people, then it became, everybody wanted it and became the chic and in car. I mean, to pick your girlfriend up in Paris in a Mini Cooper was much more chic than a new E-Type Jag or something. And, really? And everybody bought it, you know, the royal family, the Beatles, the sellers. You're a Britney Spears fan, aren't you? Oh yes, I like Britney Spears. I like her voice as well. <laughs> She's a good croaker, as they say. It was another four-hour drive until we reached the next control point on the rally, Prague. Tell you what, Paddy, full respect to you, because we're not exactly doing the same manic pace she managed in 64, and I'm a bit knackered. Oh, well, it was from a stamina point of view, I think it makes today's boys look like a little Nancy boys. <laughs> More minis, lovely. More minis. I wonder what they could be doing. That evening, we'd been invited to dinner with two of Czechoslovakia's rally veterans to share a few stories and sample the distinctive local cuisine. <laughs> you were at the control point in 64 when Paddy came through. What do you remember about that momentous day? Uh, first of all, it was very, very chilly. But there were a lot of people, and uh, I think that most of them they have been waiting for for Paddy. Yeah, but you mean they'd heard of him before '64? Oh, oh yes, and of course BMC Mini Cooper, very, very popular car. Czech Auto Club official Stan Minarek was working behind the scenes at the checkpoint in 1964. If I remember well, the, uh, some official figures of uh, spectators at this time control. There were more than 3,000 people. And they have traveled from all parts of, of Czechoslovakia. Also Professional rally driver Yaroslav Honzik was only six years old when he came to see Paddy with his father. What a shame he didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> the borders were pretty good for us in those days because the rally was getting a lot of publicity, but the only bit that was a little bit hostile was the Czech border. I'm not blaming Czechoslovakia for that, but that was the end of the Iron Curtain, and they were looking under the car with mirrors and things. And I had a four big spike tires in a sack on the back seat of the Mini, and the sort of guard went to stick his painted in in case there was a body in there, you know? And, and I said, no, 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 it's just tires, and he, he, he went to feel them, you know, the heart, and the spikes went into his hand, he really cut himself, and I was sort of so pleased, you know. It's awful. It is bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. My goodness, look at that. Yet more rally fans had gathered at the Czech Automobile Club to celebrate Paddy's victory. <laughs> oh, hello. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is like a hey, wedding queue. Co driver <laughs> gets ignored as usual. I can't believe all these people come out to see you. I really can't. <laughs> and it was apparent that Paddy's celebrity status was stretching right across Europe. This is a very special occasion because we are celebrating 100 years foundation of Czech Auto Club. And it's my greatest pleasure to have some such a famous driver. We are celebrating uh, 40 years of his victory in Ray Monte Carlo. We have uh, issued a special badge, yeah. which is a historical badge, Auto Club of Czechoslovakian Republic. I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Pedi Okir. Thank you very much for this great honor. And I'm very sad that Henry Lydon is not with me today, but he is unfortunately killed 15 years ago in an air crash. Um, and, but I've got young Jason Barlow from Northern Ireland, who funnily enough is uh, the age I was when I won the rally. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> and that's how I By now, I was well used to being relegated to the sidelines. It's just been like this the whole way, honestly. He's still got it, he's still got it. He might be nearly 71 years old, but the people love him. I am the <coughs> oldest <laughs> member of the mini club of Czech Republic. You must be amazed. Yes, I am, absolutely. I mean, the thing I'm always amazed by, Jason, is the young. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, when I was young, I wasn't very interested in what old people did, but it's interesting that the, the connection with the mini yeah. seems to bring it all out again. Yeah, you know? it's a sort of immortal, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. My goodness, who would have thought we'd get a reception like this? Terrific. No, yeah, it's been fabulous. Mind you, maybe some of Paddy's fans were taking their dedication to the cause a little too seriously. Christian and Bernard and a pair of very, very old skis. <laughs> Listen, you, you got up at what, four o'clock this morning? Four o'clock in the morning, we left Austria, yeah. Austria? Yeah, with 20 centimetres uh, snow. And uh, you've driven all the way from there, in this car? In this car. Yeah. <laughs> to meet him? Yeah. Yes. And met, they're even more bonkers than you are, Paddy. I know. Thank you. How lovely. <laughs> a pleasure. It's a real honour. It's a pleasure. We left Prague bound for the German border with another 400 miles to clock up that day. Paddy, we're exactly halfway through. I tell you, 30, never mind 37 on the door of the car, I feel as I've been married to you for 37 years. But we haven't had any major rise yet. No, and it's been very good, but three more days to go yet. But it's important, it must have taught you, you know, great tolerance for your co-driver. Whenever you're all those thousands of miles, you really must have got on well with the guys you were stuck in the cars with. It's a good test of character, been <laughs> humped up in this box for a few days. And we had a good night's sleep in there, not together, I hasten to add, because <laughs> we aren't actually married. And where are we off to now then? We're off to Reims. Reims. In France. <laughs> Pro uh, it's pronounced Reims, spelt R-E-I-M-S, isn't it? Reims. That's right. Champagne territory. Over the next two days, our trip would take us through the original control points in Germany, Holland and Belgium, before reaching the city of Reims. So, all modesty aside, Paddy, exactly how famous did you get? I mean, I certainly was well known in Ireland, whether it was... Well, they flew, well the, they flew the car back, didn't they, for, what, Sunday night at the London Palladium, which 19 million people watched every week? Yes, and uh, the car was stolen as well. Was it? Uh, oh, yeah, the car. We all went, I mean, we went after the Sunday night at the Palladium. We went and had the, to a restaurant somewhere in German Street in the West End. Oh, yeah. And uh, we just left the car outside with the numbers and everything on it, and some guy nicked it. You're and, joking! Yeah. And the police went after him, uh, and uh, he was caught. He actually had a curb going down the Cromwell Road in London, and uh, they got him. And I actually had to go to court, uh, to Bow Street, uh, the Back next transport. morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was there. When he was asked why did he do it, was he a car thief? No, he said he just had read so much about the car he was dying to drive it to see what it was like. <laughs> and still, the stories kept on coming. I mean, I always remember the Northern Ireland accents are wonderful with their, because they didn't call it Renault, Ren they Renault. call it Renault. <laughs> and and they, they actually, Renault brought out a sort of female version of the car, sort of a semi-sports car thing, uh, years ago called the Renault Floride. That's right, I remember and, it. And, and in Belfast they called it the, them, one of those Renault Florides. <laughs> So you could brush your teeth Thank with you. it. Yeah, very good for the old teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Rolls was the central meeting point and the start of the common route. Cars that made it through the preliminary stages were given a thorough check over by the team mechanics. 
Choosing the right tyres was vital to cope with the twisty, often snow-packed stages in the Alps. Time for the drivers to clock in, produce their paperwork and grab a quick cuppa. Just a few hours down the road, Paddy found himself on the wrong end of the long arm of the law. You've got all these guys and a variety of works teams and lots of wealthy amateurs and playboys and stuff and they're all kind of herring in. It's like a cross between wacky races and high society really, isn't it? But the one, the one name I bet you can't remember is that policeman who stopped you driving up the one-way street and oh then nearly got God. you chucked out of there, Monty, didn't you, they? Well, I wouldn't have been chucked out, I mean, have I been, I wouldn't have wanted I mean, it's serious stuff. We were up in the Ardennes somewhere in France and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it was cool morning yeah, and uh, it was very snowy and all, you know, when it's, when it's really snowy and blowing, a lot of the signs get covered up. And they, I didn't see this one-way street. And so, uh, Henry said, you know, sort of bear right, and I bear right. And it was a one-way street. And this very nasty policeman stopped us. And in those days, you know, we had the road book. We had coupons in the road book. That if you had any removed by the police... Uh, for breaking traffic regulations, uh, you, you, you got penalised. So uh, Henry, being a good, honest uh, gentleman, you know, the guy asked for the road book. He knew all about it, and and Henry was about to hand it over, and I said, oh, "Hide it, God, get it down there, hide it." And and uh, I said to him, uh, in my very broken French, you know, we were actually out of the rally, we were on our way home, and I was very sorry, I got up on my street, but. I was very depressed because one of my family had died and I was going home for the funeral. And he took <laughs> his terrible man. And, and he started to cry and all, let us go. And as soon as we sort of got round the corner, it was flat out and off to get back on time again, you know. But it, <laughs> What would you give to have been having breakfast with that guy the next day or a couple of days later whenever your face is plastered all over Le Monde or the Figaro or whatever? I wonder if you're still alive, but I certainly wouldn't have been pleased if he read the paper and... Uh, so that we said, Blue. pulled one on me, that Belfast guy. Next up, Sean Bree and the first of the time stages. It was here that Paddy and the Mini really started to prove their agility and strength. Right, right. So this is what, this is the acceleration you see? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, just... All the way to the red line. No, no. Hey, feel that. It's very uncomfortable though. Why don't you use an higher gear? All you're doing is using petrol. I'm accelerating. Oh, you're driving like a three-year-old, for God's sake. 